ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Morrowind Book Club. Today we're going to be reading Breathing Water. Uh, this book here was, uh, I'll just sort of lay he uh, laying here, laid here in this sort of, um, I don't know what you would call this, this sort of bin. It was, it's a donation bin, that's what it is, here in Telesero, which is one of those larger structures that uh, you can warp to if you find the appropriate index. Uh, but besides beside the point, we're here to read books. We don't care about all this other stuff. So let's go ahead and get started because the mood is set for something that sounds as um, We'll say lively and healthy as breathing water Breathing water by Ahaliel Mirm He walked through the dry crowded streets of Balfell glad to be among so many strangers in the wharfs of Vivek He had no such an on an, 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 an anonymity they knew him to be a smuggler, but here he could be anyone. A lower class peddler, perhaps. A student, even. Some people even pushed against him as he walked past, as if to say, We would not dream of being so rude as to acknowledge that you don't belong here. Serene Rilas was not in any of the taverns, but he knew she was somewhere, perhaps behind a tenement window, or poking around in a dunghill for an exotic ingredient for some spell or another. He knew little of the ways of sorceresses, but that they always seemed to be doing something eccentric. Because of this prejudice, he nearly passed by the old Dunmer woman having a drink from a well. It was too prosaic, but he knew from the look of her that she was Serin Relas, the great sorceress. I have gold for you, he said to her back, if you will teach me the secret of breathing water. She turned around, a wide, wet grin stretched across her weathered features. I ain't breathing it, boy. I'm just having a drink. Don't mock me, he said stiffly. Either you're Serene Rillas, and you will teach me the spell of breathing water, or you aren't. Those are the only possibilities. Wow, he sounds like a, he sounds like a real winner. If you're going to learn to breathe water, you're going to have to learn there are more possibilities than that, boy. The school of alteration is all about possibilities, changing patterns, making things be what they could be. Maybe I ain't serene at Rillas, but I can teach how to breathe water. She wiped her mouth dry, or maybe I am serene Rillas and I won't. Or maybe even I can teach you to breathe water, but you can't learn. I'll learn, he said simply. Why don't you just buy yourself a spell of water breathing or a potion over at the Mages Guild, she asked. That's how it's generally done. They're not powerful enough, he said. I need to be underwater for a long time. I'm willing to pay whatever you ask, but I don't want any questions. I was told you could teach me. What's your name, boy? That's a question, he replied. His name was Tharian Winloth, but in Vivek, they called him the Tolman. His job, such as it was, was collecting a percentage of the loot from the smugglers when they came into harbor to bring to his boss in the Kimono Tong. Of the value of that percentage, he earned another percentage. In the end, it was very small indeed. He had scarcely any gold of his own, and what he had he gave to uh, Serene Reles. The lessons began that very day. The sorceress brought her pupil, who she simply called Boy, out to a uh, low sand bank along the sea. I will teach you a powerful spell for breathing water, she said, but you must become a master of it. As with all spells and all skills, you, the more you practice, the better you get. Even that ain't enough. To achieve true mastery, you must understand what it is you're doing. It ain't simply enough to perform a perfect thrust of a blade. You must also know uh, what you are doing and why. Well, that's common sense, said Therian. Yes, it is, said Serene, closing her eyes. But the spells of alteration are all about uncommon sense. The infinite possibilities, breaking the sky, swallowing space, dancing with time, setting ice on fire, believing that the unreal may become real. You must learn the rules of the cosmos and then break them. That sounds very difficult, replied Therian, trying to keep a straight face. Serene pointed to the small silver fish darting along the water's edge. They don't find it so. They breathe water just fine. B but that's not magic. What I'm saying to you, boy, is that it is. For several weeks, Serene drilled her student, and the more he understood about what he was doing and the more he practiced, the longer he could breathe underwater. When he found that he could cast a spell for as long as he needed, he thanked the sorceress and bade her for farewell. 
There is one last lesson I have to teach you, she said. You must learn that desire is not enough. The world will end your spell no matter how good you are and no matter how much you want it. That's a lesson I'm happy not to learn, he said, and left at once for the short journey back to Vivek. The wharfs were much the same, with all the same smells, the same sounds, and the same characters. His boss had found a new tollman. He learned fr uh, from his mates. They were still looking out for the smuggler ship uh, Morodrung, but they had given up hope of ever seeing it. There he knew they would not. He had seen it sink from the wharf a long time ago. On a moonless night, he cast his spell and dove into the thrashing purple waves. Purple waves. Interesting. He kept his mind on the world of possibilities, that, book, uh, that books could sing, that green was blue, and that the water was air, that every stroke and kick brought him closer to a sunken ship filled with treasure. He felt magic a surge all around him as he pushed his way deeper down. Ahead, he saw a ghostly shadow of the Morodrung, its mast billowing in a, a wind of deep water currents. He also felt the spell begin to fade. He could break reality long enough to breathe water all the way back up to the surface, but not enough to reach the ship. The next night he dove again, and this time the spell was stronger. He could see the vessel in detail, clouded over and dusted in sediment. The wound in its hull where it had struck the reef, a glint of gold beckoning from within. But still he felt reality closing in, and he had to surface. The third night, he made it into the steerage, past the bloated corpses of the sailors, nibbled and picked apart by fish, their glassy eyes bulging, their mouths stretched open, had they only known the spell, he thought. Briefly. But his mind was more occupied by the gold scattered along the floor, the boxes that contained them shattered. He considered scooping as much as he could carry into his pockets, but a sturdy iron box seemed to bespeak more treasures. On the wall was a row of keys. He took each down and tried it on the locked box, but none opened it. One key, however, was missing. There he looked around the room. Where could it be? His eyes went to the corpse of one of the sailors, floating in a dance of death not far from the box, his hands tightly clutching something. It was a key. When the ship had begun to sink, this sailor had evidently gone for the iron box. Whatever was in it had to be very valuable. Therian took the sailor's key and opened the box. It was filled with broken glass. He rummaged around until he felt something solid and pulled out two flasks of some kind of wine. He smiled as he considered the foolishness of the poor alcoholic. This was what was important to the sailor out of all the treasure in the Morodrung. Morodrung, sorry. Then suddenly, Therian Winloth felt reality. He had not been paying attention to the grim, tireless advance of the world on his spell. It was fading away. His ability to breathe water, breath water. Mm. Uh, there was no time to surface. There was no time to do anything. As he sucked in, his lungs filled with cold, briny water. A few days later, the smugglers working on the wharf came upon the drowned body of the former Tolman. Finding a body in the water of Vivek was not in itself noteworthy, but the subject that they discussed over many bottles of Flynn was how did it happen that he drowned with two potions of water breathing in his hands. <laughs> and that is a book about breathing water. If you liked this video, if you liked the, the, the book, you liked the reading, um, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, go ahead and leave it a thumbs down. Either way, though, let me know what you thought in the comment section. And until next time, I would like to ask you all to game on.